let's let's dip into the other subject that uh, is the annual tradition here that, or my annual tradition. Jared just gets to listen mm. <laughs> that we teased last time. That is, yeah, every year I make a list of all the movies that I watched throughout the entire year, and these are the list is only of things that are brand new to me, first time watching in that given year. So it might be a slightly older movie, but if it's the first time I've seen it, then it goes onto the list. And so this year, Jared, I actually watched 86 movies. 86? In a pandemic 2020 lockdown period. That's pretty impressive. Of which only one did I see in the movie theater, which is right. sad. <laughs> and, yeah. and, more than, and you may think, oh, yeah, well, I saw a movie in the theater, you know, back when. No, I saw it in November. Right. Because <laughs> yeah, right. I really wanted to see Tenet in the theater. So I saw Tenet in the yeah, theater. Um, that was one you needed to see in the cinema, for sure. So, uh, and of that of that list, 16 of these movies were specifically made for Netflix. Um, right. I watched eight documentaries. I don't watch documentaries. Uh, hmm. So, yeah, it was it was a different year for viewing. Um, yeah. So I always I always make my best list, and, and it's not in any particular order, typically. Um, and then I have a good list and a worst list and a disappointing list. There's all sorts of lists that I break this down by. But I do got to say, of my best list, usually at least three or four are movies that I will add to my collection of movies right. via physical copy. This year? Okay. None. None. And it really bums me out. It's like all the movies I was most looking forward to got pushed. Um, mm. So we just need that 2020B that we're talking about earlier in the that's show. That's right? what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll just rattle these off real quick. I don't know how many of these you've actually seen, Jared, but... Uh, I'll on, if I do. On my best list, I have Yesterday, which was that mm -hmm. Beatles Groundhog Day, basically, where the guy wakes up, or he doesn't wake up, but everybody has forgotten who the Beatles are. Except for him. oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What well, was a good, good movie? Yeah, no, it's, yeah? it's, it's oh, very it satisfying. Um, like it's it's not Groundhog Day, it's not time travel, but it kind of touches upon some of those things, and it. Uh, I don't know. It, I'd it, imagine it's like I'm just getting my notebook out so I can make some uh, yeah. some little notes about what I yes. should be adding to my um, watch queue. So yesterday, it's almost like when I was watching, it's like it's like you go back in time. And then you know everything, exactly. and you know that you, basically you are the you're doing what the uh, the group that you idolize do, and you're writing all their songs. And that's what I'm saying. It's, it's like not time everyone. travel, but it is if you went back in time with all the knowledge that you know today and gave everybody that knowledge 50 years earlier. Yeah, essentially, like let's let's give everyone the iPhone 30 years in the. In the past. In the past. In the past, yeah. Yeah, yeah when everybody yeah. else is rocking their Nico Nokia 9600s. Nokia. Um, yeah. Yeah. You got your touchscreen phone, yeah. All right. That's so cool. there was that. These are basically listed in the order that I saw them. Let's put it to you that okay. way. Not what's mm -hmm. best. Um, Ford versus Ferrari, which oh, is, yeah. uh, if you're at all into racing or car culture, it's pretty dang good. Um, and then there's uh, Jojo Rabbit, which... Is one of those where it's amazing when you can make Hitler and World War II funny without being sympath like without saying, Oh, and it's all okay. No, it's still poignant, it's still pointed and aimed squarely at what was wrong with the situation, but it's also yeah. very absurdist humor. Um uh, okay. Right. Cool. And it's uh, list. <laughs> I, I've got this uh, documentary called The Painter and the Thief which is crazy in that it's this gal has her, the epitome of her life's work on display in a gallery of paintings and the, the you know, what she considers her masterpiece, her best work uh, sitting in the window and it gets stolen. Oh no. And it is caught on camera and they're actually able to find who stole it. And she could care less about prosecuting the guy. She just wants her painting back. But he was so high that he has, he barely remembers that he even did the crime, <laughs> let alone where right. he stashed it and yep. if he stashed it or if it had gotten sold. And while you'd normally think that the person would be like, well, he gets what he deserves 
get out of my life. She actually invites him into her life and says, here's how you owe me. You're going to be my subject for painting now. Oh. And she winds up, he winds up be, almost becoming amused to her. She winds up painting him uh -huh. and he starts rehabilitating and it just like gives you all sorts of feels. Um, oh, right. like, it's like one of those where you go, oh my God, there is good in humanity. Um, Probably that one too. Hmm, uh, there is a one this one was uh, uh, my wife really liked it and I thought it was really quite good too uh, it's called Enola Holmes uh, that was Enola Holmes Enola Holmes Enola so it's Sherlock Holmes's little sister oh okay yeah yeah um, that's pretty dang that's good, good about that too. yeah uh, there's Hamilton I don't Hamilton? do Broadway musicals I don't do musicals oh, where the yeah, entire thing yeah. is nothing but music damn good <laughs> All right, Hamilton on the list. Um, there's Beastie Boys story. So oh yeah, Beastie Boys story is the two surviving members of the Beastie Boys up on stage, basically doing a "This is our life," starting from square one of when the Beasties formed, going all the way to present day, basically. And it's not a PowerPoint presentation, but it's kind of like a TED talk. Um, oh so yeah, imagery cool. going on up above and stuff like that. And mm. gives you just an absolutely fascinating insight to their whole creative process and what was going on during any given album and, you know, what was going on in their lives and were they aware of the controversies that they were creating and were they buying into it or were they, you know, self-aware and going, hee-hee, and letting it happen. I mean, it's yeah. quite quite good on that end. Um, plus, it's just... Do you need to be a fan, you reckon, of the Beastie Boys to get value out of it? I don't think you need to be a fan, per se. I think you'll become a fan afterwards. Mm. Um, because you'll realize the variety of styles that were in their music. Um, yeah. I mean, if you only know them from you know, their License to Ill album, then you'll, you'd be quite surprised at where they finish up, basically. Oh, um, cool. So that was uh, as a as a minor aside to that. If you like to see how creative processes with musicians um, happen, you should definitely tune into Song Exploder on Netflix. I just um, saw the one with uh, Nine Inch Nails, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so that's been a podcast I've been listening to for, geez, I think it's about three years now, longer probably, mm -hmm. and it is such a good podcast. And yeah. the fact that Hrishikesh Hurwe. Um, got the ability to turn this into a Netflix film is something that almost makes me want to go and get a Netflix subscription so I can watch it because he is very good at getting information out of artists about how they they create processes right. and it's fascinating to hear. Yeah, mm. and then the uh, the last one that made my list and I was quite surprised that this made my list because I thought it was going to be just stupid dumb a movie called Crawl. Crawl. Crawl is basically about uh, it takes place in Florida. A hurricane is happening. Girl go uh, a daughter goes to check up on her dad at his house because he's one of these people that's like I'll ride out the storm and she's like you ain't riding <laughs> yeah. out this one and uh, gets into the house can't find him winds up finding him downstairs in the crawl space underneath the house trapped by an alligator. Trapped by an alligator. Yes. Okay. There's a big beast, the alligator, that uh, washed into there. And as the hurricane progresses, flooding starts happening, and yeah. the underside of the house starts filling up. And as it fills up, that gives the alligators more ability to maneuver and so go around. It's an extra part. It's a little bit like that that terrible shark boy movie. Um, um, that was uh, where the shark circles around the uh, um, the island. What was it called? I think you know the one I'm talking about, right? Where the there was a swimmer. She went out to... Oh, the surfer. This... Yes, I know which one. Yeah. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, it was really suspenseful. It was and... where she's like floating on the... She's floating on a whale and then... Uh, and, and then, then the shark... having to swim goes... over to a buoy and live on yeah, the buoy yeah, for yeah. a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the end of that movie is... is uh, implausible but the but, rest of the but movie satisfying all the same <laughs> satisfying all the same yeah it was it was good yeah i can't remember what the heck that one was that one was, uh... the shallows the shallows that's right yes yeah yeah um and i think that was yeah. was that blake lively i think it was 
Could be. That's the girl. But yeah, it's, so it's similar in that vein in that you're stuck, you're trapped, and you've got nature. I thought it was going to be ridiculously mm. stupid, and instead it was ridiculously tense. Um, oh, that's good. I'll done check that out. really well. Uh, you know, it's obviously a low-budget movie, but they didn't. They hid the budget. You know, they didn't. They didn't it overextend. They didn't the do budget. dodgy CG. Um, it, it's it, just particle filmmaking at its best, basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and then I was shocked to find out that the whole thing is filmed up in Canada, nowhere near water. Huh. <laughs> oh, there you go. On a set, who would have thought? On a set, who would have thought? Okay, so those are those are the best ones, and you, you're probably wondering, well, where the heck is Tenet, and why didn't it make your best list, Chris? Mm, um, yeah, noticeably absent there. Yeah, Tenet, Tenet wound up making my good list. Um, mm -hmm. Look, it has really awesome action sequences, there's no doubt about that, and it's really good filmmaking, but the truth of the matter is I watched it a second time here at home, with mm. subtitles on, hoping to clarify things. And truth be told, they just don't do a good job of explaining what it is you're actually watching. Uh, with subtitles on? Yeah, so I, put did the you English, have I put the English film? subtitles on because this the movie has terrible sound design. There's a lot of talking, you know, like where... The, yeah, that's true. There's it was a lot a of muffled, muffled, and not only that, they use... My subwoofer was getting a massive workout. The mm -hmm. low-end frequency that it's constantly pumping yeah, drowns out a lot of the voice. Ah, uh, that was a problem, right. Yeah. So they've sort of done the sound design a little bit wonky in it. Yes. And mm. Nolan has said, you're just kind of supposed to feel, you know, it, it, you're supposed to feel the movie and understand it that way. And I do, you know, while the action sequences are playing... I do kind of get it, but I also want it to be like Inception where afterwards I can really have deep discussions about what the heck is going on because I yeah. understood how the process worked. And here the process is just labyrinthian. <laughs> it, I've, uh, this is one that I also went deliberately to see in the cinema. Um, and um, uh, knowing I didn't go in looking at any spoilers or like, you know, trying to understand the movie before when I went in cold and I enjoyed it at face value. Um, I do have the opportunity to watch it again, but I don't know if I will. Yeah. Um, because I think the end, like the way that they describe the events in mean, the big scene at the end. Yeah. I kind of, it's essentially it kind of explains all the bits in the beginning for you. Anyhow, it doesn't leave you guessing a lot. There's not a lot to like really try and guess about. Um, which was different to Inception because Inception really felt like you had to piece it together yourself. And that's why they had flow charts about how the three layers work and all that sort of stuff so you can understand it. This didn't really feel like you had to understand anything at the end of the movie, which I guess no, but is... What I want to understand is how does it actually work? <laughs> oh, so how does right the whole right. premise... And the of... how it works is never explained well. Um, Inception right. did a really good job of explaining the how it works. Yeah, Inception was all about chemical, like brain and chemical right. uh, yeah. control. But this yeah. is different. This is very much science fiction. Yeah. Um, so anyway, whereas yeah, Tenet made the good list. Uh, other movies that made the good list. I'll just rattle through these real quick. Uh, Doctor Sleep, which is a sequel to uh, The Shining. Um, oh. Parasite, which was last year's best uh, picture. I think it was more hype than deserving. Um, 1917, uh, which was that basically single that continuous World War movie, which, although I appreciate the technical aspect of it, after a while I was like, just put a cut in, please. Because <laughs> oh, it, it was getting exhausting, was it? Well, it was suspending my disbelief of really all this is that close to each other? I don't think so. Um, then there was uh, Knives Out, which is, you know, if you're into that Agatha Christie kind of uh, thing, pretty dang good. Um, mm -hmm. Invisible Man, there was the first movie of the pandemic that I watched. And again, another movie where they did what they could with the best use of the budget that they had. Um, okay. And it wouldn't have gotten better with a bigger budget. So, okay. That's so why. they spent right. Yeah. They invested the right amount of money. <laughs> exactly. Um, the Old Guard, that was a Netflix movie with uh, Charlize Theron. Uh, Trial of the Chicago 7. If you're into dialogue that's witty and snappy and you like Aaron Sorkin, there you go, because he directed it. 
Um, okay. There's a uh, documentary called Boy State, which is uh, would be completely uninteresting to you, Jared. It's all of, I actually attended it as a as a kid. Um, oh. It's basically high school juniors get sent to state capitals in each of the fifty states and play government for a week. Yeah, I've seen that on Apple TV Plus. It's a TV Plus subscription. Yes, thing, that's that's what I saw it on, and uh, it gave me PTSD. Um, <laughs> and then the one that I this falls into the similar category of crawl where it knows exactly what it is which is a cheeseball B movie but does it really well it's called Unhinged it's with Russell Crowe it's basically a really bad uh, what happens when road rage goes bad but yeah the, I, saw, I saw that actually but being the floated the thing, thing that I liked about it was something would happen and I'd start yelling at the screen going, well, if he would just do this and I'll be damned if the character didn't just do that. And I went, Oh, okay. Thank you. And then, <laughs> and then things still went wrong and I went, okay, but you know what? At least you weren't an idiot. <laughs> you tried, yeah. you know, you gave it a go. You gave yeah, it I a saw go. that movie float around and I thought, yeah, that almost looks like something you could get your popcorn out for and have a bit of fun. It's with. totally popcorn. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, uh, da, 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 trying to see real quick here, I'm going to ignore the disappointing, and I'm going to go straight to, I don't know, do we need to talk about the worst? Um, yeah, let's not talk about the no, worst. Let's not I talk about the, the worst. Let's go to what my, I know. The... We're going to go to my special awards. Yeah, I love these. Because I always do the special <laughs> awards. All right. Yeah, I love them. So here's the special awards. Um, and these don't change. These are the same special awards every year. It's just what movie fits into there. So movie mm -hmm. I knew would suck, but I watched it anyways. Gemini Man and The Dark Tower. Oh, right. Um, Gemini Man being that Will Smith movie and The Dark Tower being that Stephen King adaption that they did not adapt well at all. Right. Um Avoid, in other words. Yes, avoid. Uh, movie I thought would suck but didn't. Well, Crawl. I already talked about that. And then I cool. just watched uh, The New Mutants, which is that uh, X-Men adjacent movie. It felt more like a TV pilot. Because um, yeah. it's, again, very small scale, small budget. But yeah. it worked for what it was. Okay. Um, let's see. Movie I regret paying for. Well, the only movie I paid for this year was Tenet, so it wins yeah. by default. <laughs> So, so you you really didn't like it enough? No, it's that... just it's the only one that I paid for, so it it wins by default. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Oh, okay, that's a tough one to have to put in because I don't. <laughs> I well, yeah, okay. Yeah, you know. Um, and then let's see what else we got here. We have ah yes, the curse you shaky cam award because there's, <laughs> there's nothing so much as, like watching a movie that is just doing this the entire time during action sequences oh, and, and cutting every three seconds and well mm. it's not surprising like an MTV um, video yeah and it's not surprising that a, a Michael Bay movie won this it's uh, <laughs> Six Underground which is just a load of crap right um, there's the maybe I just don't get it award and that would be going to Mank which is the movie of about uh, Mankiewicz, who wrote the screenplay for Citizen Kane. And unless you're a Citizen Kane junkie, uh, a lot of this is just going to go right over your head, and they don't do a right. good job of explaining all of it. They just assume you know all of it, and it's just kind of... It's not a bad movie. I mean, like, I found it watchable, but it's also <laughs> just like, is this going to be over anytime soon? <laughs> like, it's just watching the... Watching him. Oh, are, we, are we done? <laughs> yes. Uh, movie I'm glad I turned off less than 30 minutes into. Critter's Attack. I didn't last 10 minutes. It looked like what? a student production. Do you, remember the movie, do you remember the movie Critters? Probably not. Vaguely. It was out, out around the same time as Gremlins. Um, Gremlins. Yeah. Yes. And it was these mm. little tiny fur balls that were nasty and they came from outer space. Yeah, well, they made a direct-to-video movie just this last year called Critter's Attack. And I swear... It like student productions have more uh, polish, polish and quality to them. They went to a college campus and there wasn't a single extra walking around. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There was no money on this one. Um, right. Movie I wished I turned off but didn't. The Hustle. The, the Hustle. The Hustle is uh, Rebel Wilson and uh, Anne Hathaway. 
and it's yeah. a remake of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. I love right. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Unfortunately, they didn't change nearly anything, and I'm sorry, but Anne Hathaway is not Michael Caine. <laughs> oh, yeah. She doesn't Michael come Caine off as smarmy. About... You need... Oh. It, just, it just didn't play. Um mm. The Well, That Was Depressing Award, that goes to Uncut Gems. That's the uh, Adam Sandler movie uh, where okay. he plays a, uh, a jeweler who has a massive gambling habit and is basically paying for one gambling debt while pulling out a loan for another gambling. <laughs> so while it was depressing, was it good? It was good. It's just a bummer of an ending. Oh, Okay. Um, the, let's see, the You're Not a Franchiser Yet Award. Because there's nothing like watching a movie that then it ends and you go, really? So what was I watching? The prologue? (laughs) You don't have a sequel guaranteed, so stop it. Uh, This goes to a, (laughs) I don't blame the, a Chinese movie called Double World. Okay. That has all sorts of dubious effects and grand production value and apparently... It went. It was a victim of the pandemic, and Netflix scooped it up. Right. Um, so it was about to die, but Netflix said, "No, we'll take it." Yeah, they I have a habit of doing that, don't they? Like they do rescue a lot of films, like uh, uh, the or series that you know commercial networks won't pick up, and yet they do amazingly well on Netflix. Yeah, like the one so, with Chess. So this was, this was a movie that we're literally it was just. Apart from the fact that they, like, if you were a female character, yeah, you're dead. Um, right, okay. They were merciless on that. <laughs> but just as it would seem like it was getting to go, it ended. And I was like, well, you didn't even end. You just, like, the next portion should be happening. And you just said, yeah, we're going to stop the movie here. You went, nah. Yeah. All right. Um, next time. <laughs> and then the other movie that is <laughs> The Old Guard from Netflix. Because by the end of it, it, it tells a complete story. But again, you realize at the end of it, we just saw the prologue. The real meat is what follows. Right. And they, and they mm. set up a the villain for the next one. And I was like, as it was being set up, I went, oh, you're not going to, you're going to pay this off at all. I know you're stringing this one along for the next one. So, yep. yeah, that kind of bummed me. Got to, uh, got to get those people in for the next subscription round. You know what yeah. it's like. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is a fun one. The I Don't Even Remember You Award. Because inevitably when I see all these movies and then I look at the list, there's a couple of titles that I'll be like, what's that? I got to go to Google and figure out what that is. Right. <laughs> so sure enough, that happened with uh, three movies this year. One of them was called The Laundromat, mm-hmm. which I s- barely remember, but like... Uh, uh, oh God! What's her name? She's like America's uh, the the best actress that we have. Um, Streep, Meryl Streep, Meryl oh, Streep's okay. in oh. it. It's a Steven Sonnenberg movie. Uh, Meh. I just I don't rem- I'm I can't tell you what it's about even after looking it up recently. That's oh right. <laughs> okay, that's pretty bad. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Another movie called In the Shadow of the Moon, which was mildly fantasy, had some time travel elements in it. Mm -hmm. And I kind of vaguely remember a scene or two from it, but yeah, I had to look it up and go, yeah, I really don't remember you either. Mm. And then there was a French film called Lost Bullet that was an action movie. And had driving in it, and that's about all I can tell you. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, uh, and then okay. we have, and then we have the. Uh, this one was not as all that exciting as it was in years past. But to the yes, this is the first time I've gotten around to seeing an award. In other words, the movie's been out for a long time, and I only just now saw it. Uh, mm-hmm. The first one is called Limitless, which is a uh, Ryan Reynolds movie where he gets Ben Kingsley's mind placed inside of him. So oh, that yeah. Ben Kingsley can continue living. Um, but then he starts remembering his past. Oh, I right. I don't okay. know. But he also yeah. has, like, powers of some sort. I don't know. It's kind of... 
it was interesting. Not a bad watch. The thing that shocked me, though, was there's this film maker who just goes by one name. His name is Tarsum, who oh. does incredible visual films. He did The Cell, and he did um, The Immortals, and what else did he did? He, he, he's done some really trippy visual-looking films, and they're always fascinating to to watch. And I get to the end of the movie, and his name popped up as the director, and I went, what? <laughs> so right. the, the best I can uh-huh. figure was he was in director jail, and they went, okay, so you have to do a movie for us. <laughs> Director jail. <laughs> and just show us that you can actually make a regular movie. And this was his regular movie. <laughs> right. And then the uh, the other one that I saw was uh, Jodorowsky's Dune, which is a documentary about uh, this director from the 60s named Jodorowsky who was off his rocker nuts um, <laughs> <laughs> and wanted to adapt Dune having never read the book. Um, okay. which is a good place to start. But... I would have thought that probably when you're thinking of doing a movie, you'd probably start with reading a book or some prior art with the movie. You know, you would think. Um, mm. I think somebody gave him like the abridged quick rundown of it. And he was like, yeah, 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 I want that. And <laughs> But he's one of these guys who is, he's an artist and an artist. wants to give an experience and who cares mm-hmm. if it completely bastardizes what the material is coming from, so long as you have an experience that makes you feel and you know affected okay. you in some way. So right. on that respect, I'm happy that he didn't make the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, though, virtually the entire team he assembled went on to go work on Alien. Okay. That's uh, interesting. Yes. So... Other than him, <laughs> your script, your 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 screenwriter, your production designer, your effects designer, your uh, uh, Giger himself, they were all on this movie. They all went and then worked on Alien. Apparently, he also assembled this absolutely ginormous book. Because he storyboarded, painted, art directed every single scene ahead of time. And then took this hardbound book to Hollywood to sell the movie. Okay. Here's the thing. I think it scared a lot of the studios because they went, ooh, that's going to cost a pretty penny. Yeah, wow. All these sets you want me to make? Far out. Jeez. Right. Here's the other thing. So many of the things that are in that book found their way into other movies. Really? For instance, his opening shot started at the far end of the cosmos and in a single take, flew in, flew in, flew in, scope, 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 until eventually landing on Dune in a close-up of I don't know who. The movie Contact did the exact shot in reverse. Right. Okay. Like the exact shot. (laughs) <laughs> like storyboard exact. Yes. Yeah. Because right. apparently, although I think they said that there were three copies of this book made, only one or two of them are known to exist still. Oh. And they think that one of those books made the rounds because that's not the only bit from it. There apparently are all sorts of bits from it that have found themselves their way into all sorts of science fiction movies since. Is there like a is there like a website on there that documents all the scenes from this book? No, I don't think anybody yeah. has actually done Cause that. Because that would be a really interesting website. Yeah. I think. Don't you think? Yeah. Hmm. 